The iMac Pro was an awesome computer when it was released in 2017. I bought the model with the 10-core Xeon as it seemed the best balance available between single-threaded and multi-threaded performance. I also got 64 gigabyte of RAM. I bought this before I actually started doing any astrophotography, but it served me well once I started that adventure, and it has been a good partner with PixInsight. So much so that I've been content to wait to upgrade until PixInsight natively supported Apple Silicon. However, at seven years old, the system is starting to show its age. My plan had been to buy the M3 Mac Studio as a replacement this year, except that Apple didn't release a new Mac Studio, and based on the reports of the M3 chip performance relative to the M2 and the expected improvements coming in the M4, I decided it was worth waiting until 2025 for that. However, I did pick up an M3 MacBook Air. Now, this really wasn't intended for Pix Insight, but having spent a good chunk of my professional career focused on software performance, I began to wonder how the two systems would compare. After all, if I was at a star party, I could do some preliminary processing just to see how the project was progressing. And it seemed to me like an interesting, if somewhat ridiculous, project. After all, nobody's going to willingly move from a 10-core 64-gigabyte system to an 8-core 16-gigabyte system for PixInsight. But on paper, the comparison actually wasn't as one-sided as it might look. So how does a fairly high-end system from 2017 compare to a relatively low-end system from today? If you look at native CPU performance, the MacBook Air actually has the advantage. In the Geekbench 6 benchmark, the iMac Pro has a single-threaded result of 1,325, while the MacBook Air with the M3 turns in a much higher number of 2,999. In pure single-threaded computational performance, the MacBook Air should outpace the older Xeon quite a bit. For multi-threaded, it's 8,088 for the MacBook Pro versus 11,869 for the MacBook Air. The difference is not as dramatic, but the newer system should still win. The only question there is how the Rosetta 2 overhead will hurt the MacBook Air. Since, since PixInsight is compiled for Intel and not for the native Mac Silicon, the Rosetta 2 translation subsystem must translate the Intel instructions to native AMD instructions. Exactly how much this will cost remains to be seen. For GPU performance, though, the situation reverses, with the Radeon Vega 64 outpacing the 10-core M3 GPU with an OpenCL Geekbench 6 result of 53,580 for the iMac Pro versus 30,155 on the MacBook Air. The metal version of the numbers are higher in both cases, but proportionally so. None of this will have an impact on standard PIX Insight processes, but for tools in the Exterminator family or other third-party processes that use the GPU, then one would expect the older system to perform better. My iMac Pro has a one terabyte internal SSD, and the MacBook Air has a 512 gigabyte internal SSD. However, in both cases, I'm using an external Thunderbolt SSD as the work disk. The raw data comes from a network share on a QNAP NAS. The iMac Pro reaches that share via a 10 big, excuse me, a 10 gigabit Ethernet, and the MacBook Air via Wi-Fi 6. The QNAP NAS is also connected via 10 gigabit Ethernet. For swap, each subsystem has a directory on the internal and external SSDs. This particular configuration maximizes the results of the PixInsight benchmark script. And speaking of that PixInsight benchmark, the iMac. Pro produced a 17,200 CPU and 18,900 swap for a total of 17,400, while the MacBook Air produced a total of 10,800 CPU, 17,200 swap, and a total of 11,600. The lower CPU score on the MacBook Air might be attributable to Rosetta 2, and I say might be because I really don't know what the benchmark is doing and how much of an impact the lower amount of memory on the MacBook Air has on that benchmark score. Unlike Geekbench, the PixInsight benchmark exhibited a bit more variability from run to run, so these are averages of five consecutive runs. The swap values in particular were quite variable. I've not been able to determine the cause for that. Could be any number of things, and whether it's being caused at the application, operating system, or hardware level was beyond my ability to analyze. With all of that out of the way, so how did they actually compare in Pix Insight for real workloads? For this test, I ran WBPP with a set of data taken at home 
with the ASI 6200mm Pro camera. These are large files. Each file saved by Nina in compressed XISF format is 77 megabytes. There were three nights of data. Each night had its own flats, and there were master darks for the entire data set. WBBP did calibration, cosmetic correction, measurement, bad frame rejection, registration, local normalization, integration, and 1x drizzle integration. Combined, this took an hour and 55 minutes on the iMac Pro, and it kept the fans on the system pretty active for a large chunk of that time. The fans on the iMac Pro aren't obnoxiously loud, but they're definitely noticeable when they get much over idle, and at full speed put a fair amount of noise and heat into the room. On the other hand, the MacBook Air took 3 hours and 34 minutes. That really doesn't tell the whole story. Let's look at some of the individual processes. Calibration of 15 flat frames took 2 minutes 10 seconds on the iMac Pro versus 1 minute 41 seconds on the, uh, on the MacBook Air. However, calibration of 13 light frames on the iMac Pro took a minute 54 versus 3 minutes 20 on the MacBook Air. Measurement took 2 minutes and 4 seconds to measure 65 subs on the iMac versus 6 minutes 27 on the MacBook. Registration of 21H subs took 3 minutes and 27 seconds on the iMac Pro versus 726 on the MacBook Air. Local normalization reference generation for, for H took 2 minutes 16 seconds versus 4 minutes 19 seconds. Local normalization for H took 4 minutes 45 seconds versus 9 minutes 15 seconds. Integration of H took 1 minute 42 seconds versus 2 minutes 59, and drizzle integration for H took 15 minutes 27 seconds versus 31 minutes 5 seconds. The end result is that the iMac Pro clearly is much faster for WBBP than the MacBook Air. Not really a surprise, but the MacBook Air does it silently while the iMac Pro makes its presence known in both noise and raising the temperature in the room. Now let's turn to some timing for some post processing activities. The results here are interesting. The processes that use the GPU, Blur Exterminator and Star Exterminator, all do better on the iMac Pro as the benchmark suggests they should, but Noise Exterminator, which is also GPU based, does better on the MacBook Air. A bit surprisingly, after the benchmark results for the PixInsight benchmarks, gradient correction and local histogram equalization also run better on the MacBook Air, and the difference is quite large for LHE, while HDR Multiscale Transform turns in a better result on the iMac Pro. Ran all of these tests multiple times to ensure they were consistent, and the variability was very minor, only a second each way. What kind of conclusions can we draw from this? Given the processes where the low-end MacBook Air wins, it seems likely that they are purely CPU-bound processes and that memory doesn't affect them much. They also don't run long enough for thermal throttling to become an issue on the MacBook Air. For processes like image integration that run best with a lot of memory, performance really suffers on the MacBook Air with only 16 gigabytes. These processes also run long enough and are CPU intensive enough for thermal throttling to probably become a factor, especially for the batch processes. Based on these results, I suspect the biggest factors in this comparison for the MacBook Air running more slowly overall are in this order memory, thermal throttling, and then Rosetta. I can't give any quantitative data to say how much of a factor each is, but based on the processes that ran faster on the MacBook Air and my possibly flawed understanding of what's going on inside of those processes, I think that memory and thermals are the biggest factors. I'm pretty sure the M2 Ultra Mac Studio or the M3 Max MacBook Pro would beat the iMac Pro, but at a cost that is substantially higher than the MacBook Air. When what will probably be the M4 Max and the M4 Ultra Max Studio system show up next year and equipped with at least 64 gigabytes of RAM, they should handily outperform the 2017 iMac Pro. But that iMac Pro held its own for quite a long time, and even now it still does well against all but the highest end modern systems. In that respect, this system has stood the test of time pretty well, and getting seven years from it, probably close to eight by the time its intended replacements arrives, not a bad run. It might be in the middle of the pack now on the PixInsight benchmark database, 
but it takes a pretty high-end modern system to beat it, although they do beat it quite handily now. I know this comparison isn't the sort of thing anyone would normally do, but I think it does have some value, especially in terms of understanding how computers have changed over the last seven years and where putting money into a new system to run PixInsight is going to give you the most bang for your buck. PixInsight really does exercise all the components of the system. Memory, capacity and bandwidth, CPU performance, disk I.O. bandwidth and latency, third-party processes using the GPU. Really, unless you have an unconstrained budget, it really helps to know where it can be the most beneficial to allocate the cash. So I hope that was at least somewhat interesting, if a bit odd. Until next time, clear skies.